happy to be back in a craft that I really worked hard on as a youth, I'll, really. And I've gotten back in the ring, gotten myself back in shape, and I'm getting better all the time. So I'm really happy about it to be able to put it down and pick it up. But now you're fighting a guy that was a former world champion. Uh, he's only lost to the best in the business, Holyfield, Michael Spinks, and the first Holyfield fight was just a terrific fight. The second Holyfield fight, he feels that he lost because he had to take off too much weight. He's much more comfortable as a heavyweight. Uh, did you really want to fight a tough guy like this? Not really. I don't, I don't really like fighting tough guys. I would prefer to fight guys who are 110 pounds, <laughs> five foot. <laughs> but it just so happened that as you keep moving around the promoters, they have a lot to do with who they match you with. And you want to match as evenly as you can. And I think this kind of fight is really basically, I'm ready for these kind of fights. Well, you know, George, after this, in my opinion, you have to fight a guy in the top 10. And from there, Tyson is right, right around the corner. That's right. I hope to keep fighting as often, as much as once or twice per month. And eventually, I'd like to clean up the whole heavyweight division. That includes the heavyweight champion of the world. I'd like to be an underdog. I mean, I wouldn't uh, want it no other way. You know, you know if, if it, like, fuels my fire. You know, I, um, and, you know, it's, I like being an underdog. It's okay. You know, it's, um, it's okay to be an underdog because I want him to have all the confidence in the world. There's the tail of the tape, both in their mid to late 30s, foreman with a huge height and reach advantage. Kawi, known as the Camden Buzzsaw, just five defeats in his record, former world champion at light heavy and cruiserweight, he lost his last title to Evander Holyfield. George Foreman, gold medalist at the Mexico Olympics, his record still very impressive, only Ali and Jimmy Young have beaten him. Our commentators then are Gil Clancy, and he's alongside Al Bernstein. Okay, you're going to box for 10 rounds. You know the rules of boxing. Avoid using any kinds of power. Don't throw any punches during the break. Is that clear? Seconds come out fighting. George Foreman ready to take on Dwight Muhammad Kawi. This crowd in, in anticipation of uh, they don't know quite what because Foreman in his other efforts has won every time out. Depending on your outlook, it's a good idea for him to be back or it's a bad idea. And there's an overhand right by Kawi. He saw the Guido Trani fight. And I'll tell you, Guido Trani was able to land all kinds of punches on George Foreman. Kawi landed a good overhand right. Shook George a little bit just to start things off. And there he goes pushing him. Now, just as I predicted. And Padilla gives him a warning. Now, Padilla is a referee who usually has kind of a hands-off policy about things. Let's stand I don't know why George isn't working that left jab. He's, he's allowing Kawi to take Pick liberties. Kawi, who is thick around the middle, make no question about that, able to pretty much walk in. I, I, I don't understand Foreman's strategy at all, Al. He should be keeping this little guy away from him. Just keep snapping that great jab that he has in his face. There it is. And, of course, the uppercut you would expect to see from George Foreman. Foreman looks like he's kind of toying with Braxton or with uh, Kawi. And there's the jab from Foreman. No, he's not snapping that jab, Al. Good Just right by Kawi. Right well, I did the fight in which Guido Trani, who was knocked out by Foreman, fought him. And Trani, who is nowhere near what Kawi is, was able to bounce lefts and rights off the head of Foreman. So uh, George has to keep it out there with that left jab. If he starts to stay inside, he get himself in a lot of trouble. The jab and the uppercut his two most important weapons. He just missed with them there. You know, you mentioned the fact that the Bowie is thick around the middle. Actually, he's got no body to hit. <laughs> That's true. And his, his trucks are up around his chest. Almost anything Foreman throws to the body, you'll be a low blow. George is allowing Bowie to take too many liberties. Cowie can hit him with the overhand right. It looks like just about any time. I don't think he doesn't have a good left hook behind that right hand. Foreman lands the hook. I think the key question, Gil, is what will happen to Kawi when Foreman lands something, if he lands something big? Look at the jab of Kawi. He may be short, but as you've said many times, it's timing that makes a left Absolutely jab. Absolutely correct. I've seen many a short guy out jab these big, tall guys. He can come in behind the other guy's jab. Dwight Kawi having himself a fine first round. <laughs> Holding his hand up <laughs> to keep Foreman at bay. George Foreman looks ponderous and slow right now. And he's taking right hands to the head. And that one shook him. Body shot by Foreman. 
Two good body shots, Al. With this fight starting as Kawi would like it to. It's not the same very busy Kawi that we saw as a cruiserweight in the light heavyweight. But he's landing. There's the right and the left by Foreman. Hey, guess what? It did knock Kawi down. That'll do it for round one. The crowd is kind of hushed because what they're seeing here is not exactly, I don't think, what they thought they'd see. You know, I think uh, a, a very more confident while we went back to the corner if he saw the way that first round went. That's true, and let's see what they're telling him. Okay? Try to kill his stomach first. Look at this big son of a bitch in the stomach. He's here to come down to you then. All right? You're reaching that for one, right? All right? All you got to do is keep moving. Slim Robinson and Wesley Muzan, not too many better cornermen. That's all. Tops in the business. They really know their business. And Eddie Aliano in there to work cuts. That's a good trio of men. Well, that means they're taking this fight very seriously, as they should. And in George Foreman's corner, he stood up for the entire round, which I completely disagree with. You can take advantage of that minute rest, and you can get the guy's attention better when he's sitting down in front of you. George just stands there, and, well, he's his own man. He does his own thing. And you had first-hand experience with that when you trained him. He has won all his fights in this comeback effort. In truth, it hasn't been a, a glittering group that he's beaten. But he's won them all. He won them all by knockout. The thing with George Foreman in this fight is he's not snapping that jab. He's trying to think a little too much. And while he's giving him a lot of head motion. Now the question, it may seem early to talk about stamina, but it isn't because you saw Kawi in training get tired very quickly. Well, he's carrying all that extra weight. He figures that George Foreman has never been known for his strategy, but he has been uh, improving in that area, I guess because he's a little more relaxed. And I saw him box 12 straight minutes in the gym without a rest, which I also disagree with. <laughs> but they have him doing it. Well, at least it shows he can do it. Uh-oh. For Kawi, the left hook lands, and uh, if he keeps getting hit with those punches, he's going to have a problem. George is trying to time him, and just a little bit of head motion that Kawi is giving him is throwing Foreman all off. He just got to let his punches go, miss one or something, and land the third one. But the left hook uppercut is starting to get there against Kawi. In the old days, the Dwight Muhammad Kawi that was so skilled as a light heavyweight and a cruiserweight would probably not be hit with those. He was very tough to hit. Right now, he's getting nailed by Foreman. And it's taking its toll, I would think. You know, he's standing in there with him. Oh, that one hurt, Kawi. He's hurt now. Padilla steps in, but Dwight Kawi is definitely stunned. After a good first round, Kawi has been nailed with some big right hands. Lands his own hook against Foreman. And the right hands who were bouncing off Foreman's head in round one are not there now. Much slower Dwight Muhammad Kawi, but it's a pretty slow Foreman as well. There's the jab by Foreman. That's what he. About. That's what he should be using. Good left hook by Kawi, and another good left hook. Foreman pushes him off on the right hand, and another right hand. George Foreman felt those punches. He is getting nailed with some big shots now by Kawi. Kawi with the jab that lands, and Kawi is talking to him. Kawi was hurt earlier. Now he's. Been the, the ropes. Oh. Well, an interesting round two, to say the least. Certainly was. George looked like he was getting it from pretty good, starting to get his timing down a little bit. Well, we came back with a series of punches, and they all landed. And Foreman continues to stand in between the rounds. I'll put that thing in my nose, isn't it? White Cowie did fun. land some big ones in the last round. Let's take a look at a little action from that last round. There's George, very lazy with a jab, and he gets countered by a left hook. In a round. And another left hook. And George is trying to push him off. And that 
a very familiar posture right for Foreman. But you counter it. You counter it with your right hand, okay? Right. But get your chin down. I want your eyes on the other side. Make it go the right hand. Not the right hand. We're headed to round three. That is George Foreman, the 39-year-old ex-champ, trying to recapture that glory. Looking across at the, what looks like kind of a tired Dwight Muhammad Kawi, but a Kawi that's landed some big shots in the first couple of rounds. Kawi, the former light heavyweight and cruiserweight champion, gets another right hand home. That's because George is not using that jab. What they should be telling him to do is jab at Kawi's chest. He's not going to miss him if he hits him on the chest and he's going to knock him off balance where he can pull a couple of combinations. And there is the jab that you talked about. Well, he just pushed it, though, Al. He's got to snap that jab. Right hand by Kawi, and that woke up the crowd and woke up Foreman a little bit. He doesn't back up. He keeps coming. He throws a bizarre right hand to the back of... Oh, there goes... Something hurt Kawi to the back of the head. Looked to me like it got hit in the back on the kidneys, uh, Al. That's now, is that a like knockdown or not? I guess not. I guess whatever it was. Boy, it was very tough to see what that was. Something hurt him. Well, Palmer just nailed him with a pretty good right hand. something to the kidneys that yeah. drove him out of the ring. You know, he was holding the back of his head. It was not called a knockdown, apparently. There was no... Well, the referee didn't give us any indication of what it was. There so, was no eight count. So with, with Kwawi on the deck, it, he should have at least given us some kind of... In, and now Kwawi is landing some pretty good short punches himself. Uppercut hurt Kwawi, but we've said that before, and he seems to come back. Foreman under the microscope to be sure. People looking at what he has and what he doesn't have. Are we in a bad spot for him in that corner? Land some rights. That left hook was a go-home left hook, but it missed. Under a minute left to go in round three. In a round in which both men have landed big shots just like the second round. Again, the right by Kawi, a counter right. George doesn't seem to have any snap in his no. punches at all, Al. He's so ponderous, they're pushing punches. And that's probably why Kawi's still standing, because he's landed some big shots. There it is again, the right hand. Those are not tremendous punches, because as Gil said, they're not being delivered properly. His big punch, his best punch is still that left jab, but he's not using it. Big left hook by Kwawi. Dwight Kwawi doing what Guido Trani did so well, those overhand hooks and overhand rights getting there. For George Foreman, defense is not his strong suit right now. Well, because he pulls, his, he pulls his hand so far back before he punches out. And he is, but that has always been the case with him, and he's always had that now, problem. Right? got him bleeding. All right. Come on. Who knows how to come out? 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 to the kidneys. Kwawi just fell down. It was that strange right hand. It was a delayed reaction, which is why it was tough to tell what did it. He must have hit him pretty hard in the kidneys. You know, the right hand. Yes. Right George on, Foreman can hit. Fire yours right back. Right, right open over top. That's one, now. Come on, now. Yeah. Pep talk to Kawi. We're headed into round four, longer than a lot of people thought this would go. It's a huh? close fight. It certainly is, and George Palmer was just bouncing up and down like he's trying to feel his legs. There, there's all that pushing that I was telling you about that they were working on in the gym. In my opinion, we're just working on punching with George, not pushing. He's not using that left jab at all, Alan. Not even a little I mean, bit. Wouldn't you think that from the other fights, he knew that was his best punch, that that's what he'd be doing, snapping out that jab. He used it very effectively in his fight with Rocky Sikorsky and even the fight with Trani. 
and in all the other ones. Not here. Howie gets in a, a left hand. It's weird slapping right hand, and Padilla appropriately gives Foreman a warning for backhanding. Well, it was a backhand. Now, this has really slowed here. And what we saw in the Norris Snipes fight could take place here. Two men very tired. They're telling George in the corner, Ruffin. I'd be telling him to punch him. I think that might be a better idea. Ruffin. How we not much on his punches right now. In fact, nobody's really punching. Well, just the kind of funny thing is, Quawi's strategy says if he can get George into the later rounds, George would be tired. George's corner strategy is to is to rough Quawi to make him tired. I mean, why don't they just depend on fighting ability instead of seeing if we can tie it first? Maybe we should skip right. Good right hand first. counter by Quawi. Good combinations by Dwight Quawi. He's able to hold George off with one hand and throw that right hand with the other hand. Foreman better start punching. There's the jab. Uppercut by Kawi. And so what has been landed in this round primarily has been landed by Kawi. Landed left, left hook by Kawi. Now he's taunting George just a bit. Well, Foreman is going to have to start putting a little snap, especially the left jab. There isn't much on George Foreman's punches right now. And George is starting to gasp for air, Al. Right hand by George Foreman that does very little damage to Kawi, or it appears. George looks disinterested, looking over at his corner. Lands the uppercut, not much there. Well, for the cynics that didn't think George Foreman should be doing this, they're probably making their case right now because he's not looking good. I have to remember, as, as uh, heavy as Kawi has become, he still was able to go 15 rounds with a guy like an Evander Holyfield. He has abilities. Oh, yes, he definitely does. There's no question about that. Now, he was hit with three good shots by Foreman. Gil, I don't know about you, but I have my answer. I think that Foreman is not going to knock him out with one punch. If he's going to do it, it'll have to be with a series of punches. He's going to have to start, again, snapping that left jab, really get some snap into it, get him on the end of the jab. If he don't, can't do that, he's in for a long night. Let's hear what they're saying. Now, let's, let's listen to Foreman's corner to get back further. corner talking to him but uh, pretty subdued George with a 52 and 2 record 49 knockouts in that span of course the only two men he lost to Muhammad Ali and Zaire Africa and a decade ago losing to the fancy boxing Jimmy Young in the heat in I believe San Juan Puerto Rico correct? San Juan Puerto Rico was 100 degrees in the building you were there uh, you know about that heat well he but that was about as much snap as I've seen George have on a punch tonight. A little left hook. He has not gotten leverage on his punches. He's landed some big ones. Warning the Kawi for low blows. Kawi landing a couple of good shots. The foreman pushes Kawi back, and while he's off balance, he doesn't jump on him. And that, that, that takes some energy to be pushing that 222 pounds around all the time. Well, while, that, we, while we just relax and step straight back, and George doesn't look to punch him. Time after time. That tactic started when he did so effectively to Joe Frazier and pushed him off his rhythm. But uh, in this instance, it seems that's not necessary. He could just stand back and punch like that. George is looking to find him. You can move your head all night out, but your body doesn't move. George can try throw some real bombs downstairs. He's really not trying to hit the body of Kawi. He's landing in this round, no question about that. He's having a good sixth round. And he got right. nailed. Kawi lands a short right hand and a left hook. Another hook by Kawi. Foreman just pushes him off. 
But you have to start thinking decision here if this fight keeps going and start talking about who's landing more punches. Norman's had a pretty good six round, but how he came with a couple of big shots. Well, if this fight continues this way, I think we're going to see a very controversial decision. It does have split decision written all over it. Right hand by Norman. And that uppercut hurt cut. He faked him out. Wow. He faked out Norman, then came back with a right hand. That was fascinating. I've never seen a fighter fake that much. No, it looked like he was going down. Wow. We've all seen Ali fake being hurt, but not quite in that posture. And now George turned around and looked at his corner. Gil, do you feel like everything is kind of in slow motion here? Yes, I it's certainly like We're do. watching a fight as if you could stop it and use a still every 10 or 12 seconds. There's 22 seconds left in round six, and that left hook did hurt him. That's a knockdown because it, no, it isn't. It should have been. He went yeah, against he went the ropes. the ropes, right. That's correct. Uh, that should have been a knockdown. Instead, Foreman stopped punching. How we got up. Oh, there's been some odd things in this round. How we went down a couple of rounds ago. No, nothing was called. We'll do it for round six. There's a full moon out tonight. Next round is going to be an important round, Al. While we get by the next round, I think we're going to find things very, very interesting. Depends on how much will while we has right now. How you feeling? Tell me, boy. Huh? How you feel? Serious questions being asked in that corner, and uh, here's what we thought might have been a knockdown. Big left hook by George. That is a knockdown. Yes. When the ropes prevent you from going down, it's supposed to be a knockdown. It's what the rule book says, but in this case, it wasn't called a knockdown. Using the end swell on the swelling on the left eye of George Foreman. We're moving into round seven. It's been about in which that man, George Foreman, has hurt Kawi a couple times, but Kawi has also nailed him. I think this is the key round right now. This is going to be the key. And if you're wondering, George Foreman, since he started his comeback in March of 87, has never gone to the seventh round. So this is new territory for him since he came back. And you would think that would be something George Foreman would be using. Well, somebody maybe has to tell him. <laughs> it's true. And even then, what makes you think you pay attention? You know? right. The right hand gets there by Foreman. There's the uppercut, and that right hand pushes Kawi back. But before, we have thought Kawi might be in real trouble, and he wasn't. The jab in the right hand by Foreman. And the jab helping to set things up, and as you said, Gil, it's something he should have used earlier. He's got a great jab, and he just won't use it. That was always the case, even in the old days. Well, he's using it now, Al. Five consecutive good jabs, and then he went to the body. Well, you said this would be a key round, and right now, George Foreman is dominating it. That was the first good left hook to the body, which I think he can land all day. And I'm not sure that didn't really hurt Kawi. I think Kawi wants to quit. That's it. Well, as I said, Al, he had the will to get by this round, which he did not have. Well, it's, a, it's an unsatisfactory ending, to be sure, from all standpoints. But as you look at George Foreman, he'll take it because he gets the win and, I guess, continues on in his comeback bid. Said it would be, we thought it might be an ugly fight, Al, and it was. There was no nothing sparkling about the fight whatsoever. George uh, just brutalized the fight while we is what he did. And there were, of course, many times in that fight, and it'll be interesting if we get a chance to, to get the judges' scorecards, how they had that scored, because I there's a very good chance in my mind Kawi was maybe even or a little bit ahead. It was close anyway. Very, very close. I thought maybe the was by a, a, by a point bit or ahead. two. That's yeah. all. 
Well, George Foreman wins on a TKO. It is his eighth straight win since his comeback. And uh, as all the others, it ended in a knockout. This time he was extended to seven rounds, the longest he has gone. And some people will wonder, did he beat anybody in Dwight Muhammad Kawi? And what would a, heavy, a top heavyweight do to him? Well, I guess we'll get that answer in the future. Let's take a look at some of those short. The end of there was that good left hook underneath. I think that took all the rest of the fight out of uh, Dwight Plowy. I haven't mentioned that he was wide open for that punch. And he's just brutalizing him now. Nothing great, no big snap, but the punches are there. And I guess Plowy knew he was out of gas, and that was the end of the fight. George, if we can spin you around here, if that's possible. This fight started out uh, on a tough note because uh, Kawi uh, was landing those overhand rights and those left hooks. Were you hurt by any of those? Well, not really, but I was really devastated by his energy, his ability, ability to recover from punches. Uh -huh. You, it, it looked to us like you had a hard time getting off with your jab, and then finally you got that left hook into the body. Was he a tough target to hit? Let's face it, shorter guys are really unorthodox for boxers. The shorter they are, the harder it is to get a. Uh, an orthodox jab off on him and he was playing it real good he played my jab but as a rule it caught up with him and told it catch up with him he's a fine man brave individual were you happy with what you did tonight well you know I'm happy when I win but uh, he wasn't hurt and that I'm thankful to God for all that I'd like to say hello to my sparring partner Roscoe down in Houston he was a middleweight who got me in shape for throwing fast punches and I'd like to say that uh, I feel overshadowed by you you're too much of a celebrity <laughs> You know, you're a singer and everything. Yeah. I'm just a boxer, but well, that's what about. But in this fight, there were moments where it looked like you got everything going, and there were moments where uh, it was very difficult to you. Well, I really didn't want to get out there and get a first round knockout. That's what I was trying to avoid. I wanted to use my left jab, see how I could do against shorter guys who have good overhand rights. The heavyweight champion of the world fights like that. So it's to my benefit that I go one or even several rounds with these kind of fighters. I'll only get better, and uh, they'll get hurt anyway because they can't.